Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. In April of 1965, we were introduced to a new adventure television series that ran for three seasons on NBC. That series was called I Spy. It's about a team of U.S. intelligence agents, Kelly Robinson and Alexander Scott, as they travel undercover as international tennis bums. Robinson poses as the amateur with Scott as his trainer, playing against wealthy opponents in return for food and lodging. Every episode included them chasing villains, beautiful women, and spies. The forces that led to the show's development were writers David Friedkin and Morton Fine, along with cinematographer Fouad Saeed. These three together formed a corporation called Triple F Productions, under the wing of Desilu Productions, where the show was produced. Sheldon Leonard, an actor-producer known for playing gangster roles in the 1940s and 50s, and probably best known for being the producer of The Andy Griffiths Show, was the executive producer of I Spy, receiving top billing before the title in the series' opening sequence. He also played a gangster villain role in two episodes and appeared in a third show as himself in a humorous cameo. He also directed one episode, and he often served occasionally as a second unit director throughout the run of the show. The series broke ground in the fact that it was the first television drama to feature a black actor, that being Bill Cosby, in a lead role. In the beginning, an older actor was supposed to play a fatherly mentor to Culp's character. But after the producers saw Bill Cosby performing stand-up comedy on a talk show, Sheldon Leonard decided to take a chance on hiring him to play opposite Culp. They then decided to change the mentor-protege relationship to same age partners who were completely equal. You can notice during the run of the show that Cosby's race was never an issue in any of the storylines, although there were an occasional reference in their dialogue in somewhat of a joking manner. As a straight-laced Rhodes Scholar who is fluent in many languages, Cosby's character of Scotty was really the brains of the team. His partner was more the athlete and playboy who lived by the seat of his pants and wits. The series did its best to emulate the James Bond film series in that it used exotic international locations. This was really unique at the time for any television show, especially since the series actually filmed its lead actors at these exotic locations that ranged from Japan to Spain, rather than just relying on studio stock footage. I Spy competitors during that same time frame, like Mission Impossible and The Man from UNCLE, were mostly filmed on studio backlots, like Desilu and MGM. Filming on location was very expensive and required significantly more planning than studio filming did. But this quality was the key to I Spy's success. Each season, the producers would select four or five scenic locations from around the globe and create stories that took advantage of the local attractions that were there. The chemistry between Culp and Cosby is thought to be the primary reason for the show's success. Fans seem to tune in more for their hip banner than for the espionage stories that were in them. These two famed actors quickly developed a close friendship that was very much like their on-screen characters. This lasted until Culp's death in 2010. The series also coined unique phrases. One of these was the word wonderfulness. This word was so popular that it was used as the title of one of Bill Cosby's albums of stand-up comedy that was released concurrently with the TV show. 
Cosby would occasionally slip in bits of his comic routines during the improvised dialogue that he had with Culp. Many details of Cosby's life were also written into his character, a character that doesn't drink or smoke, while Kelly Robinson does both. There are also many references to Scott's childhood in Philadelphia and also attending Temple University. These two main characters have been operating together as a two-man team for a couple of years when the series begins. It's indicated that Robinson is a few years older and has been in the department longer than Scott. Both agents sometimes question the morality of their profession, and they ponder the impact, the life that they have led on their psyche and their soul. These two are extremely close, often referring to one another as being like a brother. Yet they both seem to wonder what kind of a life and family they would have had if they had not gone into the espionage world. Now there are tons of guest stars that appear in this series, but one that stands out to my mind is a two-episode endeavor that we see Joey Heatherton in. Joey was a singer, dancer, and actress, and a true sex symbol of the 1960s and 70s. She's best known for many television appearances during that time, often showing up on variety shows. Her career was beginning to skyrocket, but in April of 1969, she married Lance Rensel, a Dallas Cowboy wide receiver. In November of 1970, Rensel was arrested for exposing himself to a 10-year-old girl. He went on to plead guilty with the promise to undergo psychiatric treatment, and he was given a suspended sentence. Heatherton filed for divorce in September of 1971, but this event caused her career to lose its luster, and she herself never really recovered from the psychological shock of Rensel's offense. In 1985, she went on to become unhinged a little bit farther. She was arrested and charged with interfering with a government agent's duties and disturbing the peace after she allegedly slapped and pulled the hair of a clerk in Manhattan's U.S. Passport Agency office. She was also arrested and charged with theft of services after she refused to pay a $4,900 bill from a hotel and spa in Long Island. Then in 1986, she was again arrested for assault after she stabbed Jerry Fisher, her former boyfriend and ex-manager. She stabbed him in the hand with a steak knife during an argument that the two were having. This is a really good series. Do yourself a favor and go back and take a look at it. I think you'll enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.